Hey, what's going on, guys? Kurosama here. And you're probably here because you're curious. You're curious like a lot of people are when it comes to the Gundam Universe line. And I've already reviewed a couple of kits already. Uh, the Wave 1, Wave 2, and I believe this is Wave 3. If it's not, then it's Wave 4, but I kind of lost track. But I think in the past, I gave a lot of these kits a rough time. Uh, the Wave 1 especially just... It didn't really do much for me. Wave 2, eh, it was okay. I think Wave 3 was one of the better ones in which it had the Easy 8, and I really, really liked the Easy 8 and the Wing Gundam Zero. Uh, Wave 2 was fine enough because it had the Death Scythe, and I think Death Scythe was fine, but the Barbatos, or Barbatos, uh, I'm already expecting these, uh, these comments in the chat, but the uh, Barbatos was really really bad and uh in the review i think a lot of people really enjoyed it they thought it looked fine but honestly the proportions were really really atrocious uh, I, I could not stand it so i actually just gave it away so I, it's not in my collection anymore and today we're taking a look at the tall geese how does it shape up is it something that's going to be worth your hard-earned dollar let's see and I want to give a shout out to NewTypeHQ.com. If you want to pick up a Gundam Universe figure for yourself, you can go to their website and use that promo code Krosama or, you know, obviously type in slash Krosama at the end of NewTypeHQ.com. So that way you can get 10% off your first purchase. And if you want to pick up something else like paints, supplies, or model kits, you can go ahead and snag those up as well. But on to the review. So the first thing to look at is going to be the packaging. It's a fun enough packaging. It's essentially the same as they always had. You're going to have a really nice illustration on the front. And it's something I've really always loved is the illustrations are top notch. I love them. They look great. Looking on the back, you're going to have just, you know, poses. You're going to have some description of the tall geese, uh, description of the Gundam Universe line, which is, it's all fine and dandy. You're also going to have the next available, whichever is in the, you know, the current wave. So there's only two in this wave and we're going to be taking a look at both of them this week. Now, for price point, it is going for about 25 bucks USD. Um, over here in Japan, I found it. I found this one in particular for 20 bucks, uh, about 2,000 yen. Fine enough, um, but some places were going all the way up to about like 3,000 yen, and I think that's about. $28 USD. So it's it's quite expensive over here in certain locations, mostly like Adion or um, actually just mostly Adion. Yamada Dinky and Yellow Submarine are selling those for pretty much around 20 bucks, which is great. So for surface level detailing, it's actually going to have quite a bit. Um, obviously, there's no like model kit on retail that is of the TV version tall geese. We pretty much just have the, you know, Glory of the Losers, the Endless Waltz ones. Um, but there is the P Bandai of the, you know, TV version, both real grade and I think the Master Grade as well. And what I would say is actually the surface level detailing is almost to the same quality as the Master Grade. I keep looking at it and I do have my Master Grade somewhere. It's buried in a bunch of boxes. I can't pull it out right now. But I'm looking at like more or less the thighs. I'm looking at the, um, you know, pretty much the chest, the, the waist. A lot of those details are actually present in the Master Grade. So when it comes to surface level details on this particular figure, it actually stands out and it looks really good. So I can't knock them for that. Now for color separation, it looks pretty good. You are going to have the blue for the eyes. You're going to have like the yellow for the front vents. Uh, you got obviously the black and the white separating across the entire body. And you're also going to have the nice emblem right there on the shield, which is pretty surprising they even put that there. But I, honestly, this surface level, you know, we're not talking articulation. We're talking surface level. It looks good. I, and, and this is something I would honestly display on my shelf, not not the Detolf, not the glass shelf. It ain't worthy of that. But it is pretty much worthy of an open shelf uh, and probably just collect dust. Now let's talk gimmicks. There's none. <laughs> There's really no gimmicks here. Uh, I was looking around. I was like, man, like there has to be something going on with this figure. And there's really no gimmick. There's no open hatches. There's nothing really like stand out-ish. Um, so everything is pretty much a standard figure. Uh, what you see is what you get. Now let's talk articulation. So far, you're going to have a pretty good ball joint for the head. And the torso is going to be on a peg and socket joint. Shoulders is going to be on a ball joint and can move all around. Can move up. The shoulder armor is actually going to be able to move up and down. The little weapon arm holder, that can move up and down. Weapon is going to be on a ball joint. Bicep is going to have a swivel. And the elbow is going to have two points of articulation, which is going to have a pretty good movement. 
Hannah's going to be on a ball joint. For the shield, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to go up and down, and it's going to be on a ball joint. For the thrusters, it can go up and down, can rotate. The little wing can go out. Hey guys, Future Crow here. So what I just wanted to point out that I failed to point out in the actual review is that the thrusters don't open up. That's a horrible, horrible thing. I just don't see why they couldn't put the extra engineering into these thrusters because that would have made this figure so much better. But yeah, I just wanted to point that out because I did forget it in the review. For the waist, the little front armor bits are going to be able to move a little bit. Side skirts can go up and down and move back and forth because they're going to be on a peg, as well as the bottom part of the thruster for the side skirt. Hips are going to be on a ball joint. You can also rotate the hips, but honestly, the hips are so thick that they're just not going to rotate. Knees are going to have two points of articulation, and feet are going to be on ball joints. Now, the articulation is actually a little bit of an improvement from the previous waves. From what I can tell, the only major restriction is going to be in the hips because the ball joints just doesn't allow for a very wide dynamic range of movement, but everything else is actually pretty fine. Now for accessories, you're really not getting much. You do get the shield with the emblem, looks great, attaches right onto the shoulder. Underneath the shield, you're going to get two beam saber hilts, but you don't get any beam saber effect parts. So I actually had to bum one of the beam saber effect parts from one of the previous waves, and it attaches fine, so you can still pose with the beam saber attached into the hand. Now speaking of hands, you're going to have two closed fists, and then for the right hand, you're going to have an open one as a trigger hand, but you could use it for the beam sabers as well. And you also get the Dober gun, which... It looks okay. It's a little bit tad small, has like no color separation. It's all one solid gray piece. Clips onto the shoulder and you can clip it right into the hand. Um, I find myself having difficulty good at getting it into any good poses with the Dober gun, but it looks fine enough. And of course, you're going to get a little attachment so that way you can clip it onto a stand. Now for comparisons, it is coming in at a six inch height, so it's just a six inch figure it's not a actual proper scaling figure like the robot namashi being roughly about a 1 and 144 scale even though this is a six inch figure it, it kind of does scale decently well with the master grades but honestly like i said it doesn't have a scale so for my final thoughts Honestly, the Gundam Universe line has always been a little bit difficult for me to recommend or even just dismiss because it's it's for a very particular audience. So this is what I would say. It's a cop it if you're in the audience of people who really like a, the particular MSs. So what I mean by that, if you absolutely love tall geese and it's just one of your favorite mobile suits and you just really like it, I would say cop it. Um, pricing probably doesn't matter because you just really love the mobile suit, but I don't think these are worth more than 25 bucks. I don't even think they're worth 25 bucks at all or 20 bucks. They're probably more of like a $15, you know, figure. I think that's a, a little bit more of a fair pricing, but I don't work at Bandai. I don't have the schematics on the actual production costs. Uh, but I would say, you know, you have to really determine if the money is worth what you're getting. So if you're really into tall geese, I'll say cop it. Now, if you're really into the Wing series, and you just obviously like Tall Geese because it's a part of the Wing series, I would say cop it. If you like to play with your toys that are going to be extremely durable, and you can pretty much chuck it across the equator, and it's going to survive all climbs and places and terrains, I would say cop it. Now for the Watch It category. I would say it's a watch it if you just don't want to pay the price. If you want the figure, but you want it at a cheaper price, that's going to be an obvious watch it. Just see where the price goes. It's usually going to go down immediately after release because these are just kind of shelf warmers. You go to your local Target or Walmart, it's going to be on the shelf because a lot of people just are not going to be picking them up. But I would say watch it, maybe f frequently go to your store or frequently watch uh, New Type HQ. Um, they are generally going to be doing um, you know, sales every once in a while. And this could be one of the things that goes into their weekend sale or like a holiday sale. So be sure to look at that. Or if you, you know, want to get it at the retail price on NewTypeHQ.com, you can also use that 10%. So that way you can get a little bit more of a discount. Now for the drop it category, it's a drop it only if you just don't like it. I mean, it's a given. So, hey guys, if you don't like Wing Gundam, you don't like Tall Geese, you don't like the figure itself, you don't like the price point, whatever, it's a, it's a drop it. So, I I consider it a cop it just because I do actually like Tall Geese. I don't like Wing Gundam, the series. I think it's a really bad series. 
Uh, but I think the wing suits, for the most part, are fine enough. The tall uh, especially being a really good looking suit. Um, like I said, this is a really nice looking figure, and I think on the shelf, it's going to look pretty good. Uh, but once again, it's not good enough for the detail shelf. But that's it for me guys, so thank you all for watching, and I want to give a special shout out to all the members. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. If you do want to become a member, go ahead and check out that tab, and check out the perks that comes with each different tier. Uh, pretty much all the members get to see like the products I'm going to review, they get to see a little bit of a synopsis, as well as pictures uh, early. So if you do want to check that out, hey, maybe you can become a supporter. If you want a little bit more perks, such as getting like you know products that are like in a proxy service, Service, check out the small crow uh, tier uh, but if you do want to get more of a uh, premium kind of proxy service where you get you know P Bandai products go ahead and check out the big crow tier but that's it for me guys thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next review where we're gonna be covering God Gundam but I'll see you later bye bye